Paul Nuttall, UKIP Deputy Leader. Interesting times for the Conservative Party, for UKIP obviously. The referendum approaches. How do you feel your campaign's going? Well, opinion poll out this morning has us two points ahead. Um, I think we're the side with momentum at the moment. I think uh, the British people are learning more about the European Union as the day goes by and the more they learn, the less they like. And it will in the end come down to borders, safety, the democratic deficit, the fact that being in this place ensures that the majority of our laws are made behind closed doors by a European Commission. Uh, and also the cost. You know, it's costing us net around £30 million every single day simply in membership fees alone. I think the British people are learning this. I say the more they see, the more they dislike. I was asking a Conservative uh, MEP the very same question yesterday. This is clearly a pivotal time for the country, a pivotal time for the Conservatives, and I believe a pivotal time for UKIP. Should you win, should you lose, what will that mean for UKIP? Well, if we win, uh, then UKIP should be the beneficiaries of any vote that comes our way, because if it wasn't for UKIP, there would be no referendum. I mean, Mr Cameron only offered this in 2013 in an effort to shoot the UKIP fox. He never thought he'd have to give the referendum anyway, because even he didn't believe that the Conservatives would win a majority. Uh, and we are where we are because of UKIP. If we lose the referendum and it's tight, uh, well, the SNP didn't do too badly, did they? after losing a referendum because there will be a significant proportion of people in this country who will be angry and where will their votes go afterwards? They won't go Labour, they won't go Lib Dem, they won't go Green. Doubt it, they'll go Conservative, they'll only go UKIP. So either way, the future's bright. I have to be more specific with you, Paul. Uh, if UKIP win, if uh, the vote is to leave, does that mean the end of UKIP? After all, you've achieved your aims, no? Uh, no, it doesn't mean the end of UKIP. In fact, it'll just be the beginning. Um, the leaving the European Union is just one step to change in the country uh, as we would like to see it. And look, UKIP isn't a single issue pressure group anymore. It's a political party with a full raft of policies. In fact, I think we had the best manifesto out of any of the political parties at the last general election, which was you know, accepted uh, by uh, the media and the commentators. Uh, and look, a lot of people have joined UKIP now uh, because of issues around education, uh, defence, immigration, crime, not just on the issue with the European Union. So if we win the referendum, it's just a first step into the future. Yes, I respect the fact of what you're saying. I also appreciate that UKIP is no longer a single, uh, a single policy party. But by the same token, if you're out of the European Union, wouldn't it be rather difficult to have MEPs in the European Parliament? Uh, well, the MEPs will be here for two years if we're out of the European Union because it will take two years under Article 50 to negotiate our way out. Um, but we will we'll still be here and we'll be ensuring that the government's feet are held to the fire on this and that we get a good negotiation and a good deal for Britain. Uh, after that two years, well, then we've got decisions to make. People like me who've had careers before we came into politics will go back to what we've done before. Indeed, you know, some, some will stand for Westminster, might stand for Westminster myself in 2020. And as I say, UKIP should be the beneficiary if we leave this European Parliament. And who knows, Paul Nuttall mightn't be here in 2020. He might be in the House Commons.